Hey guys, so we are going to be introduced to a new book series. This book series is the one that we're going to be following pretty much the whole school year. And it's called Among the Hidden, and it's by Margaret Peterson Haddix. Um, this book series is known as the Shadow Children series. And this is a type of book known as a dystopia. Dystopia books are similar, or movies, are similar to Hunger Games, where there's like a future world and some problems that they may have that relate to government issues. Fix my light relate to government issues. So um, in this book, um, it's a future world and there are, there's a family and they're the Gardner family and the main character is Luke. See Luke there. And Luke um, is born the third child of the family. Well, the problem is in this future world that families can only have two children and they can have two children and after that they can't have any more. Um, because the world has become overpopulated and there is a food shortage. Um, so there's not enough food to go around. The world's pop overpopulated, so people can only have two kids. After that, you can't have any more. So because Luke is a third child, he is among the hidden. He's a shadow child. Um, his family hides him away in the attic. And, you know, he comes down and, you know, uses the bathroom and takes showers. And he goes outside and play because he lives out in the country. Um, but... Over time, he's not allowed to do that anymore because uh, a new development of houses um, starts to come. And so he's not able to go outside anymore. Um, so things start to unravel for him and some things are revealed um, about his world. But I think it's just a really, really good, deep book. And I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. So um, I'm going to read chapter one here and then you'll be able to uh, click on the next videos for chapters two, three, four, and five. Um, and that's what you'll be you know, reading this week um, with me in class. So you can listen to me read. You can also follow along with the PDF I have posted of Among the Hidden by Margaret Peterson Haddix. Let's begin. He saw the first tree shudder and fall far off in the distance. Then he heard his mother call out the kitchen window, Luke, inside now. He had never disobeyed the order to hide, even as a toddler. Barely able to walk in the backyard's tall grass, he had somehow understood the fear in his mother's voice. But on this day, the day that be they began taking the woods away, he hesitated. He took one extra breath of fresh air, scented with clover and honeysuckle, and, coming from far away, pine smoke. He laid his hoe down gently and savored one last moment of feeling warm soil beneath his bare feet. He reminded himself, I will never be allowed outside again. Maybe never again as long as I live. He turned and walked into the house, as silently as a shadow. Later that evening at the dinner table. Why? he asked at the supper table that night. It wasn't a common question in the Gardner house. There were plenty of howls. How much rain the backfield get? How's the planting going? Even what's? What Matthew do with the five sixteenth wrench? What's Dad going to do about the busted tire? But why? wasn't considered much worth asking. Luke asked again, why'd you have to sell the woods? Luke's dad harmed and paused in the midst of shoveling forkfuls of boiled potatoes into his mouth. Told you before, we didn't have a choice. Government wanted it. You can't tell the government no. Mother came over and gave Luke's shoulder a reassuring squeeze before turning back to the stove. They had defied the government once with Luke. That had taken all the defiance they had in them, maybe more. We wouldn't have sold the woods if we hadn't had to, she said, ladling out thick tomatoey soup. The government didn't ask if we wanted houses there. She pursed her lips as she slid the bowls of soup onto the table. But the government's not going to live in, those ho in the houses, Luke protested. At 12 years old, he knew better, but sometimes still pictured the government as a very big, mean, fat person two or three times as tall as the ordinary man who went around yelling at people, not allowed, and stop that. It was because of the way his parents and older brothers talked. Government won't let us plant corn there again. Government's keeping the prices down. Government's not going to like this crop. Probably some of the people who live in those houses will be government workers, Mother said. It'll all be city people. If he'd been allowed, Luke would have gone over to the kitchen window and peered out at the woods trying for the umpteenth time to picture rows and rows of houses where the firs and maples and oaks now stood, or had stood. 
Luke knew from a sneak peek right before supper that half the trees were now toppled. Some already lay on the ground. Some hung at weird angles from their former lofty positions in the sky. Their absence made everything look different, like a fresh haircut exposing a band of untanned skin on a forehead. Even from deep inside the kitchen, Luke could tell the trees were missing because everything was brighter, more open, scarier. And then, when those people move in, I have to stay away from the windows, Luke asked, though he knew the answer. The question made Dad explode. He slammed his hand down on the table. Then you gotta stay away now. Everybody and his brother's going to be trampling around back there to see what's going on. They see you? He waved his, his fork violently. Luke wasn't sure what the gesture meant, but he knew it wasn't good. No one had ever told him exactly what would happen if anyone saw him. Death? Death was what happened to the runt pigs who got stepped on by their, young, their stronger brothers and sisters. Death was a fly that stopped buzzing when the swatcher hit it. He had a hard time thinking about himself in connection with the smash fly or the dead pig. Gone stiff in the sun. It made his stomach feel funny even trying. I don't think it's fa fair. We've got to do Luke's chores now. Luke's older other brother, Mark, grumbled. Can't he go outside some? Maybe at night? Luke waited hopefully for the answer. But Dad, but Dad just said no without looking up. It's not fair, Mark said again. Mark was the second son, the lucky son. Luke thought when he was feeling sorry for himself. Mark was two years older than Luke and barely a year younger than Matthew, the oldest. Matthew and Mark were easily recognizable as brothers with their dark hair and chiseled features. Luke was fair, smaller boned, softer looking. He often wondered if he ever looked tougher like them. Somehow, he didn't think so. Luke didn't do nothing no how, Mark, Matthew jeered. We won't miss his work at all. It's not my fault, Luke protested. I help more if I... Mother laid her hands on his shoulders again. Hush, all of you, she said. Luke will do what he can. He always has. The sound of trees on their gravel driveway came through the open window. Now who? Dad started. Luke knew the rest of the sentence. Who could that be? Why were they bothering him now in his first chance all day to sit down? It was a question Luke always heard the end of from the other side of a door. Today skittish because the wood's coming down. He scrambled up faster than usual, dashing for the door to the back stairs. He knew without watching that mother would take his plate from the table, hide it in the cupboard, we slide his chair back into the corner so it looked like an unneeded spare. In three seconds, she would hide all evidence that Luke existed, just in time to step to the door and offer a weary smile to the fertilizer salesman or the government inspector or whomever else had come to interrupt their supper. That was chapter one, guys.